What's up everyone? The second power of veto of Big Brother Canada Season 10 has been won and it seems that there's already a controversy brewing in the house. We've got so, so much to talk about, so welcome to your live feed update. Alright folks, now right before we get started, if you haven't already, I would appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and also... I'm emphasising this one a lot this season, hitting that like button helps me so, 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 so damn much. So please hit the like button and also hit the bell icon to get notified every single time a brand new upload goes live on the channel. Alright, let's jump right into things, folks. So, who won the power of veto? Now, on top of, of course, uh, JC Lynn and Jay competing for the power of veto, we had Betty, Helena and Josh. And something I found very, very interesting, and this is me totally being flabbergasted right now, is the fact that in Big Brother Canada, in modern day Big Brother Canada, the HOH doesn't even compete in the veto comp. I mustn't have been paying attention in the episode um, because I'm so on autopilot that the HOH always plays in veto. So that's an interesting twist that I kind of like. But anyway... Who won the power of veto? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the second power of veto of Big Brother Canada 10 is... It's JC Lynn, and I am I'm thrilled. I, I, listen, right, I, when a nominee wins the power of veto, it makes the week so much more interesting. So, so much more, because you're a fool if you don't take yourself off the block. Marcellus, Big Brother 3, y'all OGs will remember what I'm on about. If you, uh, if you used to watch Big Brother back then, or if you've seen that season, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But basically, this is two weeks on the trot now, two weeks in a row in which a nominee has won the power of veto. This never happens ever. I just love it so, so much, and it creates for a much more exciting week, as I said. So, yes, I would expect, ladies and gentlemen, for JC Lynn to use the power of veto on herself. If she doesn't, she's a damn fool. So she needs to use the power of veto on herself um, to keep herself safe for this week. But a huge congratulations to JC Lynn on winning the power of veto. Now, an interesting conversation to have is who is going to be the replacement nominee. Now, of course, Marty's made all sorts of promises this week, and... The question is, can he actually keep to them? So, at the beginning of the week, we saw Jess pleading for safety with no filter whatsoever. Let me finish. I need to talk right now. Let me finish. I need to finish this sentence. And I think it kind of worked. Crazily, I think it kind of worked. Because basically, Marty hasn't brought up Jess's name as a potential replacement nominee. She, uh, sorry, they were, um, I, I, I do apologise. I said this yesterday again. For pronouns, I'm trying my best to kind of uh, to get used to them and, and, and say them correctly. So Jess, uh, their, their name hasn't been brought up um, since, which is interesting. Now, whose name has been brought up? We've got Kevin as one of them, of course. Now, Kevin's kind of a bit of an outcast in this season. Um, so he could be one that goes up now. Also, this will be the one that blows things up if it happens. Now, Marty made a promise to Steph during the Head of Household competition. I won't nominate you if I win Head of Household, as long as you don't nominate me if you win Head of Household. So he has that promise to Steph. However, Marty has now gone down that avenue of saying, do you know what? Steph might actually be somebody I have to put up on the block. Jeez, folks, I'm loving this season. It's just so, so good. And I'm going to talk about Steph for a second, right? I talked about her social game on night one, how she went around and basically talked to everybody, and that was very, very impressive. Also, might as well put it out there. I've put... I it's on Twitter already. I have a huge crush on Steph. Um, so I don't, I, I don't... I don't want to see her go... <laughs> Not yes, anyway. Um, however, however, if I'm splitting that, if, 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 like I always try and do, I always split personal from game. Personal level, Steph needs to stay because you all know why. And uh, on a on a game level, she is somebody who is involved in quite a lot of block alliances. So it will be more interesting if she gets taken out because then it won't be as much of a steamroll. But Tom's crush and 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 this and this, you know, the old the old heart is uh, is is <laughs> is saying, don't nominate Steph, keep her around. However, um, the Big Brother fan inside of me is going, Steph kind of needs to go because then it'll make it a bit more interesting. Oh God, listen, folks, it, it, it's amazing how you can have two totally different sides of the game, and that's what happens inside the game as well. As a viewer, you have your personal views and your game views, and then on the inside, you also have your game views and your personal views. But man. How the heart gets involved in Big Brother. <laughs> okay, now for the slightly controversial um, happenings that are going on in the house right now. Okay, so before people start commenting, why didn't you just put the clip in? Copyright issues, I can't do that. However, I'm going to try and retell the scene and, and, and tell it as best as possible in the fallout from it. So... Kyle and Jay, I, I, I'll, I'll see if I can put the link in the description. I'm not, don't hold me to that, but listen, if I can find a link that I can put in there, folks, then... Then check out the description. You can watch the video after I've explained it. So Kyle and Jay were having a conversation um, 
after the veto competition, now Kyle is realising Jay needs to start campaigning now because he uh, they haven't won the power of veto. Now, I'm, I'm being very careful how I tell this story, so just bear with me. I, Kyle said to Jay, you know, as a fan right now, you know, seeing that you're about to start campaigning, it gets the big brother blood pumping. It's like a feeling of adrenaline, you know, and uh, I'm excited to see what you can do with your campaign. And then he kind of says to him, you know, um, Jay, um, I know you'll probably start doing this campaign of I'm going to try and uh, I can be the person that takes the big strong men out. And then Carl starts going like boom, 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 boom. Like like that's what he said. He made the noise boom, boom, boom in like a deep voice, you know, as an imitating like this is how I saw it. And I'm pretty sure this is how 99% of people saw it. Big, when he said like the big strong men, he meant like imitating like, you know, like big bodybuilders, you know, who were like, you know, I'm, you know, not like in a way where Jay has basically gone afterwards and basically started telling a story around the house that Kyle has made monkey noises. Um, oh God, it's, it's sickening to see Jay spreading something like this that totally isn't true and I'm so unbelievably glad that ca- that the cameras are on because stuff like that can ruin people's careers if if there wasn't any cameras there. Nobody's to say Kyle didn't do that if 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 the um if the cameras weren't rolling so I'm glad that there was raw footage of the camera the live feeds literally on them when Jay said that Kyle did not make any monkey noises as far as I'm concerned as far as I'm pretty sure 99% of social media are concerned everybody's kind of given their view on it and Basically, Jay is going around and totally, in my opinion, fabricating and exaggerating what what happened. Like Jay's in the kitchen, kind of like I don't want to be, I don't want to imitate it because I don't want to come across like I'm doing anything. But you'll find clips online if you search it. But he's in the kitchen, kind of full on exaggerating and throwing his arms around and making noises and stuff like that. And I feel really, really sorry for Kyle. I'm going to talk about Big Brother UK for a second, so folks. There was a season of Celebrity Big Brother UK and there was so, so, so much um, controversy that came with that season. Um, it was the last season we had of Celebrity Big Brother and there was a lady named Roxanne Pallet and there was a guy named Ryan Thomas. And there was an incident in which Roxanne basically, like Ryan was kind of just like play fighting around with her as you do, you know, just kind of having a laugh. And then Roxanne basically twisted it massively and basically said, and the cameras were on and, and, and there were so many complaints. It got brought up, I'm pretty sure, in the government in the UK, you know, in the in Parliament. And oh my God, it was just, it was all over. It was crazy. And basically Roxanne totally fabricated the truth and made it sound like Ryan was hitting her and beating her and stuff like that. And she basically lost her entire career after that. She lost her career. She isn't even on TV anymore because of the way she tried to falsely accuse Ryan of of hitting her and beating her and uh and rightfully so it was disgusting people like that are dangerous and i know it's early doors with this one but i put out on twitter and i I do believe this it reminds me of that incident people like that are dangerous people who fabricate the truth people who you know blow things out of proportion and try and play victim which is how I see it, if I'm being honest. I'm sure everybody else has got their, their opinions on it, but that's how I see it. And I'm I'm thinking worst case scenario here, only because I've seen this season of Celebrity Big Brother UK. Dangerous as hell. Kyle is a stand-up guy. Kyle is a guy, he's got a mental health podcast. He talks about things that are important. He talks about things that guys don't necessarily talk about. Mental health is a huge stigma amongst guys and... I, as a guy myself, I have got so, so much respect for Kyle doing something like that. There's no way Kyle is somebody who is cynical or nasty or sadistic or in any way, shape or form. Or even, you know, we'll go down that route. Kyle doesn't come across as a racist to me either. Um, so seeing Jay go on like that is incredibly disappointing and scary, in fact. Because that can do damage to someone's life, someone's career and their life. Only because I've seen what happened with Roxanne in Big Brother UK. But anyway... The truth came out after all that and Roxanne basically, she quit the house, she left the house and she came back for her interview with the host, Emma. And Emma Emma didn't hold back, she she was holding her accountable for everything and, and it's what needs to be done when people go on like that because it can do damage to the person that's victim. Ryan ended up getting so, so much support after he was crying in the diary room. It's awful, I mean, he has a family, he had his career and everything like that and he still has it now, thank God. But that's what Roxanne did, she, she drove him to that point and then... Uh, crazily you know I mean the, the public just got behind him and it was amazing and they voted him all the way to the end and he won the game 
Um, he came out first place. He was close. Second place was Kirsty Alley. And uh, Kirsty Alley, I know she's a bit controversial, but she was just wonderful in that season, if you ask me. Both worthy, uh, both worthy winners of, of, of being the winner. But that just shows you when people can see the truth, like we can right now on the outside, on the outside looking in, we know what's going on. And thank God, thank God that the cameras are on. And we can see what actually happened because if things do get out of proportion, then I'm sure production can show the the, the clip to the house, and then people can see the truth. Now Kyle knows um, about what's being said because he has had his own opportunities to talk to other house guests and kind of explain his side of things. It's hard to tell where people are kind of lying in in which they believe it or not because I think I'll go back to the Big Brother UK reference when we were watching that season of Big Brother UK. Um, because the house guests don't play a game in, in the UK version, it's all just a public vote. You're kind of just in there as a social experiment. People get their opinions involved and there's a lot more arguments because people ain't got a game to play. They won't blow up their game if they start having an argument. The public are going to like you rather not. Whereas in the Canadian and Amer- or just the North American versions of Big Brother, you have a game to maintain so people don't necessarily always take sides or, t- or say things. So it's hard to tell what people are believing. Um, I really hope people are, are leaning towards thinking Carl hasn't done anything wrong because he just seems like that. Listen, we've known him for, what, nearly a week now on the feeds? I, well, not on the feeds, but on Big Brother, you know, because it's only been three days of feeds, but he just seems like a really nice guy. And I know looks can be deceiving, but in this case, I don't think that's the case. Kyle seems like a top guy, and Jay seems like somebody who likes to play a victim. That's just my opinion, and I just, I'm really hoping and praying that this doesn't get blown out of proportion because things can get nasty real nasty when they do that is all of your live feed updates for today folks i thoroughly hope you all enjoyed watching please let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below um i feel like a lot of today's update was taken up by the jay and kyle incident so yeah that's uh obviously we got the power of veto and a bit of talk there but the feeds were down for a good chunk of the evening last night and uh, in the afternoon because um they um that were competing in the Power of Veto competition. One more actually update has just popped on my head right now. I've never done this before, but I'll give a quick update in the uh, in the outro. Steph and Moose seem to be getting quite close. Um, much to my dismay, because <laughs> as I said earlier in the video, well, I, I put it on Twitter myself. I uh, I went to see a movie. I went to see the Batman last night, and, I, and it was about three hours long. And I came back out, and I'm like, what? I literally just went to see a movie, and Steph and Moose are in the showmance now. I was like, my dreams of being in the showmance with Steph are over. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's like solid yet, but they seem to be getting close. I think Steph was into Gino, Gino wasn't into Steph, now Steph's gone to Moose. I don't know, just usual Big Brother showman shenanigans, but there you go, folks. And I wish I was in the showmance with Steph, but that's not going to happen anymore. But hey ho, folks. <sighs> Take a breather. Right, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below and um, how you're feeling about the power of veto. Congratulate JC Lynn if you're happy to see her win. Congratulate her anyway. How do you feel about the incident between Jay? And Kyle, I'm 100% on Kyle's side. He has done nothing wrong, in my opinion. But folks, I'd love to hear all your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, as always. I hope that you're all staying safe, staying positive, and staying healthy out there. And remember to be kind to one another. But folks, in the meantime, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Do all of that good stuff. But until your next live feed update, I've been your host, Tom Vasey. Good night.